My name is Amber Lodiger Riker, and I'm a web developer with the University of Virginia's Miller Center. The Miller Center focuses on study of the presidency and seeks to apply lessons of history to modern life. In the course of building presidentialcollections.org, we've encountered a lot of understandable confusion about metadata. This video is intended to clear up some confusion and provide general guidelines for working with it. Metadata is simply data about something. For example, when you're listening to a friend describe a photograph, that person is giving you metadata. They might say, I found this wonderful black and white photo of Nixon with Elvis. It was taken at the White House in 1970. That's all metadata. But if your friend then says, here it is, see? That's the item itself, not metadata. Metadata lets us know things about an item, like its description, year of origin, ownership, or creator, without necessarily seeing the item. A library record is metadata. A pet's ID tag is metadata. Metadata is the information that describes a thing, not the thing itself. Metadata is what lets us search for an item or sort a list based on type or origin. Without metadata, a collection is simply a pile of stuff. A format, or schema, is simply the container we use to hold metadata in a structured way. You've probably used schemas in your life and not even realized it. For example, iTunes holds metadata about every album and song in its library. Title, artist, and year of release are all pieces of metadata. In the library world, there are a wide variety of different data formats that both humans and computers can understand. Those metadata formats are defined in something called a schema. Some examples of different formats are TEI, Dublin Core, METS, and MODS. A schema simply defines a common structure and set of vocabulary for use with that particular format. One of the most common ways of building metadata is through coding called XML extensible markup language. You might be familiar with HTML, which we use to structure web pages. XML is very similar to HTML, but XML is used to describe content rather than presentation. Another common way to structure data is using a language called JSON, JavaScript Object Notation. JSON is the native format for use with JavaScript, so it's often preferable on the web. That said, as long as your metadata is in good shape, it's usually not too difficult to translate it from one format to another. I'm about to give some advice for building high quality metadata, but first I want to acknowledge something. It's very, very rare that someone would be building metadata from scratch. Usually we're sorting through previously abandoned projects, outdated schemas, or partial catalogs. I know it, you know it, our bosses and colleagues know it. But the most important thing, new project or old, is to start somewhere. Here are some tips to help you be successful. Different schemas have different strengths. Try to pick a metadata schema that will serve a variety of purposes you might realistically encounter. For example, Dublin Core doesn't currently have a built-in field to hold a transcription. If you think you might need that someday, lean towards a format that might have more options. No format will be perfect in the long run, but thinking about your future challenges will help you pick a long-lasting solution. Some fields in a metadata schema are meant to serve very specific purposes. It's important to have an unyielding respect for those purposes. Remember our iTunes library? Genre is an example of a standardized field. Its options are limited, and it uses a controlled vocabulary to keep entries consistent. Some other examples of standardized fields might be ID numbers, dates, addresses, or size. Let's take ID number as a real-world example. An item's ID should always be unique and remain unchanged for the full lifetime of an item. You might be tempted to use dates in an ID, or format, or cataloger. 
avoid this temptation since all of those things can change over time. If your standardized fields are consistent, your metadata will be more flexible with any changes that you might need to make in the long run. Relatedly, be consistent. This might be the most important of all. Once you start building metadata, document your practices. For example, how do you format names? First name, last name, last name, comma, first name. How do you handle names with three words or four? Being consistent now will make your collections more discoverable to users in the long run, and it increases your flexibility in case you ever need to change your schema. Remember, you're building a system that will be in use far beyond your own involvement. So the clearer you can make it, the better it will be.